Hey, this is Politics with Laura, and I got a good one for you today. Oh, this is fire. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. This is pure fire. Oh, my goodness. Ashley. Ashley Merchant, shots fired. Oh my goodness. Oh, her declaration, I'm sorry, her motion to dismiss 42 pages. I'm not going through all 42 pages, but it was fire. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. I know Fanny wanted to simply just do this. She wanted to get away. Oh, man, I'm telling you, look, look. If you didn't hear the bell, you have now. Now, I don't know if you know who Danny Spiegel is, okay? This is Danny Spiegel. Ashley Merchant is Danny Spiegel of law. Oh, my goodness. Danny Spiegel is a power weightlifter. Oh, she's whooping tail. So is Ashley Merchant. She's whooping tail. In law. Oh, in law. Oh, yeah. Oh, she she got she got Fanny on the ropes. But but oh my goodness. Okay. Before I go any further, let me do a little house cleaning real quick. Um, here, I, please like, subscribe, subscribing is for free, subscribe, please, please, please subscribe, it's for free, now, um, Politics with Laura hits all, every single age bracket except for Teenagers. <laughs> I know teacher, teenagers, they don't want to hear what I have to say. I know they don't. And I, but they'll come to me later. But however, I got to say, I'm really proud. Look at this. I got some in uh, 18, 24 year olds, 24, 25, 34, 35, 44, 45, 54, 55, 64, 65 and plus. Now it goes, it vary, it varies uh from month to month, but it's always, I have them always in all categories except for 13 to 18 year olds. They don't care what I have to say. That's all right. So got that out of the way. Please subscribe. That's for free. Like, hey, dislike if you don't like it. Help the algorithm. Help me. I'm trying to get to 5,000 and 10,000 subscribers. I'm trying to get on up there. Okay. Outside of that. Outside of that. Ashley. Ashley. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let me just go ahead and get into it. She spills it. She, she spills it out. But I got the motion. The motion. Let's check it out. Let's check it out. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Here. Here. Michael Roman is represented by Ashley, Ashley Merchant, and also her husband, John Merchant. And they're like, uh, Roman's uh, motion to dismiss grand jury indictment as fatally defective in motion to disqualify the district attorney, her office, and special prosecutor from further prosecuting in this matter. Oh my goodness. She just gets right to it. As some people will say, shots fired. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, let me get back to it. Let me get back to it. Okay.
So she comes out the gate. I'm not going to read everything, just the main points that I want to add to. She comes out the gate, says, comes now. Ooh. Defendant Michael Roman by as through his un undersigned counsel in pursuant the fifth, the 14th Amendment of the United States Constitution, Article 1, Section 1, Paragraph 1, and Article 6, Section 8, Paragraph 1 of the Georgia Constitution, the inherent uh, superv supervisory powers of this court. The Georgia rules of professional responsibility and other laws set forth herein moves his honorable court for an order striking the special purpose grand jury report and dismissing the criminal indictment in its entry against Mr. Roman on the grounds that the entire prosecution is invalid and unconstitutional because Fulton County District Attorney never had legal authority to appoint the special prosecutor who assisted in obtaining both grand jury indictments. Oh my goodness. Oh, 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 she went there. She went there. She went there. Went there. She didn't. She didn't go there. She went there. Invalid. And then she's going to explain why. Because Nathan did this, not Fanny. Nathan. Oh my goodness! Look, if you saw my short, if you saw my short. <laughs> As I said, Nathan is that tall cup of chocolate milk. And Fanny went on that tallywhacker swing, if you know what that means. And as one of my uh, subscribers says, Fanny got laid. <laughs> Nathan got paid. And, the, uh, and, and, and Fulton County people got screwed. <laughs> And I'm not laughing at that, but it, okay. Oh my goodness. Okay. 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 Let's break this down. Okay. The prosecutor who assisted in taking both grand jury indictments. As a result, both indictments contain structural errors and irreparable defects and should be dismissed in their entirety as Mr. Roman. Mr. Roman also moves the court for an order disqualifying the district attorney. Okay. Her office and the special prosecutor from further prosecuting the instant matter on the grounds that, that the district attorney and a special prosecutor have been engaged in an improper clandestine personal relationship during the um, pendency of this case, which has resulted in personal pro special prosecutor and in turn, a district the district attorney profiting, profiting significantly from the prosecution at the expense of the taxpayers. Oh, 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 okay. The district attorney and the special prosecutor have violated laws regulating the use of public monies suffered from irreparable conflicts of interest and have violated their oaths of office under the Georgia rules of professional conduct and should be disqualified from prosecuting this matter. But she doesn't stop there. Introduction. I'm just going to, you know, jump around. The instant motion is not filled. Uh, I'm sorry. 
The, in, the instant motion is not filed lightly, nor is it being filed without considerable forethought, research, and investigation. Nonetheless, the motion must be heard as the issues arise herein strike at the heart of the fairness in our justice system and if left un unaddressed, the unchecked, threatened to taint woo, the entire prosecution invite error and completely un um, undermine public confidence and the eventual outcome of this proceeding. Oh, she's going there. She, she's like, there are fewer, there are, there are fewer positions of authority in Georgia's justice system, more powerful than the elected, elected district attorney. Oh, so true. The district attorney has incredible control and influence over the entire criminal justice process, including the powers to decide who and when to charge and how to charge them, which cases will get rid, uh, get tried, and which cases will be resolved. And importantly, the power to allocate public monies provided to the operation of the District of Tal uh, Attorney's Office. All right, which is very true because she can determine who she's going to try. She can determine if she's not going to try them. She can determine how she's going to try them, how she's going to charge them. That's basically up to her. The police say, here, there's a file here, 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 here. Yes, no, yes, no. Oh yeah, first degree, third degree. You know, she has that. Okay. In cases presenting a unique opportunity for the court to review the authority and, and determine if the district attorney here overstepped her legal discretion and authority and whether she and the special prosecutor violated the law and their obligation under the Georgia rule of professional conduct when they engage in a personal romantic relationship that they have that has ultimately yielding subsequent income to the special prosecutor, meaning the man got paid, he got paid, he got paid, and she got laid. And the uh, and the people of Fulton County got played. Thank you for allowing me to use that. Okay, uh oh. Okay. Okay, sorry about that. There's a lot of emergency noise going on out there. Okay, normally the district attorney uses funds to, uh, to allot pursuant to the county's prior approval would not be newsworthy or legally actionable. But this case is different. The district of uh, the district the, the district attorney saw additional funds from Fulton County to clear the COVID backlog including making details presentation to the board of commissioners in 2021. And she ultimately received the funding from Fulton County, but she has not used those funds for that purpose. She apparently has used them to prosecute this case, Donald Trump and his 18, uh, um, co-conspirators. Even assuming that were proper, were proper and could be forgiven, even within the contours of the prosecution, there is a separate and very important concern about her use of the money. 
as the layers unfold, it becomes clear that the district, uh, the district attorney and the special prosecutor would be profiting personally from this um, prosecution at Fulton County's expense. Once again, on its face, this is not an earth shattering and generally well within her discretion, but there are several important facts that distinguish this case from typical ones and which render the indictment invalid as a matter of law. Okay. I'm going to jump through. I'm going to jump through. So right now she's just simply talking about the, uh, let me switch it real quick. Right now she's simply talking about the money part and it's going to go in layers. Oh man, I didn't think, okay, Ashley had a hard time getting the evidence in because she was too emotional and upset, which I get. And when you start thinking about the info that she had, I mean, you know, you know that the email, uh, the text messages, I mean, it, it just goes on and on, but you get back to this. All right. The district, the district of the, ugh, the district attorneys, the district, the district attorney choose to appoint her romantic partner who at the time, at all times relevant to the prosecution has been a married man. Adamantly, this is a bold allegation considering it is directed to one of the most powerful people in the state of Georgia, the Fulton County District Attorney, which is true. She's in the biggest county that has the most, the most power and a lot of money funneling, funneling through it. And as we go through, you'll see it. So here, um, how do we know this? I'm going to briefly, there's, there's a, a lot of um, points that she makes. She says, um, an open record request means she's putting it out there, right? The Fulton County revealed that the district attorney did not obtain county approval to appoint a special prosecutor. No. The special prosecutor had admitted his oath was not filed prior to his work on the case. You got to put your oath in. You got to put your oath in. Why should the special prosecutor not just file an oath? a simple administrative task for a lawyer. All lawyers have to do it. The special prosecutor is seeking a divorce in Cobb County and sought successfully to seal those records, hiding them from public view. Why should a, why should a private citizen such as a special profit prosecutor shield filing related to his income Oh, in spending, in, in spending from public view. Mm. <laughs> She's rough. While filing the uh, while filing in the divorce are sealed by uh, court order, a uh, legality of which is open to question. Information obtained outside of the court filing indicated that the district attorney and special prosecutor have traveled personally together in such places. And it, it, it the list goes, okay? And the list goes on and on, even DC, okay? The district attorney had special, had the special prosecutor have been seen in private place, in, in private together and in about an Atlanta area. They were seen together. Sources close to both the special prosecutor and the district attorney have confirmed that they had an ongoing personal relationship during the pendency of the special prosecutor's divorce proceedings. And even when Fanny, oh my goodness, Fanny, even when Fanny went to the historically 
black church said, oh, I am not with that man. Like Bill Clinton said, I have not had any, not one, sexual contact with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. So you have Fanny saying, I have not had any sexual contact with Mr. Wade. No. A week later, well, we have a relationship. <laughs> oh, man, you can't make this up. You just can't. You can't make it up. Okay, according to these sources, the personal relationship between a district attorney and those special prosecutors began before the prosecution was initiated and before the district attorney appointed the special prosecutor. Okay, um, the undersigned, meaning Rome, Michael Roman, lawyer um, Ashley Merchant. The research revealed, revealed that the special prosecutor has never tried a felony RICO case. Never. The state of Georgia and the city of Atlanta has several lawyers who specialize in prosecuting and defending RICO cases. Despite having access to all of those resources, why would, why would the district attorney instead appoint someone who has never tried a felony RICO case? That is an excellent question. Why, Fanny? Why? Or Fanny? The special prosecutor based Oh, goodness, what am I doing? Okay. The special prosecutor, based on his lack of experience in this type of felony, would not be qualified under Fulton County standards to be appointed to represent any defendant in his case, given the complexity of the charges. If the special prosecutor is not qualified to defend this case under Fulton County standard, standards, how can or how is he qualified to prosecute the case? If that is why the district attorney did not seek approval from his appointment. Okay. Since being appointed as special prosecutor, the special prosecutor has been paid an estimate almost $1 million in legal fees. Oh, man. Of course, additional fees would be expected when private counsel is hired, but that would assume they are not in a relationship if the district attorney had uh, the district attorney and they were qualified to do the work they were hired to do. Oh, Fanny, 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 Fanny. O-M-G, 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 O-M-G. That is bad. One man. For a year and a half, gets paid a million dollars, less than a million dollars. He's doing a ding. He was doing a dingling swing. Was it worth it? Was it worth it? Okay. The special prosecutor's fee has been lucrative in comparison to any reasonable measure. The district, the district attorney's yearly income salary, including state county supplement is um, $198,266. Okay. And she lobbied, okay, that right there. Why is it important? Okay, Let me do one. The district's the district attorney failed to obtain the required approval to appoint a special prosecutor prior to him obtaining indictment against Mr. Roman renders a special prosecutor under the role 
of in of a nullity and without effect under Georgia law. Okay, it goes on and on and on and on. Okay. This is 42 pages long. Okay, Willis and Witt had engaged in, okay, we already talked about that. Let me get to the more pressing things that really have not come out. But she addresses this, but she addresses this um, in her uh, pleading or in the courts. Okay, let's get to the big stuff. This right here is the big stuff. This is outrageous. Okay. This is how much this man was paid. Oh, 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 okay. During a year long, however, Wade was paid a total of 299,770 and received uh 3,526 as reimbursed for travel. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh. Oh my goodness, that is ratchet. When he went traveling with Fanny on so-called business, she put cash in his hand, as she said, and he turned around and went back and got the court or the taxpayers to pay him back. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make it up. This is outrageous. Outrageous. And 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 um Ashley breaks this down. She got all these invoices. In November 2021, he was paid fifteen thousand dollars. Fifth, I mean, I'm sorry. Yeah, fifteen thousand dollars. December, $15,000. January, 2022, $15,000. February, 2022, $9,000. March, $32,000. April, $33,000. Mm, mm, mm. And the reimbursement traveled to Denver and Washington, $3,000. May 2022, $33,000. June 2022, $34,000. You can't make this stuff up. They're robbing people blind. July, well, allegedly, I can't say that. Look, they, 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 he, he didn't. He doesn't have he doesn't even have 50 cent, 38 cent. It should be 34,033 cents, something like that. Round everything off. I don't believe it. Okay, July 34,000, uh, August 35,000, September 35,000, and October 2022, $7,750. These Three invoices were paid out of comp confiscated funds seized by property. Oh, confiscated funds, meaning that if you do something and your house gets repossessed, your cars, they take that, they sell it. He got that money. Fanny said, okay, let's go ahead and use this money up, okay? Pay that, pay him. I'm gonna pay my man that. Pay my man that. Pay my man that. Uh, pay my man that. Uh, outrageous. Confiscated funds, seized properties, funds, and the remaining were paid out of the county general fund. Oh my goodness. Oh, it doesn't stop there. Let me see. October. They didn't stop. He didn't stop. November, 25,000. December, 23,000. Oh my God, there's more. January, 2023, 20,000. 
February 2023, 34,000. March 2023, 36,000. April 2023, 35,000. Oh, my God. Oh, this is beyond despicable. Oh, my goodness. Okay, I'm going to go past that. Okay, in comparison, Willis receives $129,473 as a salary from the state of Georgia, plus an additional $6,000 accountability supplement, plus an additional $62,793.66 supplement from Fulton County for a total number salary of $1,900. Ninety-eight, uh, one thousand nine $1,989,266. And I'm not going to continue on with that since. The amount Wade was paid under the contracts is far greater than the justices on a Supreme Court of Georgia. Oh my goodness. The, 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 the Judicial Council of Georgia recently recommended superior court judges receive a pay increase from the current $186.11, okay, to $223,400 per year. And Nathan gets paid $700,000? That is ridiculous. Beyond ridiculous. That is beyond ridiculous. Oh my goodness. He got paid twice the amount of Judge McAfee. McAfee. He got paid twice the amount of McAfee in a year and a half. You you can't make that, that. That is ridiculous. Beyond ridiculous. Okay. Let me skip that. It's only going to go into smaller things. Okay. Wade has never filed his oath of office prior to beginning work to the case. I mean, on this case, though he was never duly authorized under Georgia law to serve his role as special prosecutor. Just on that, just if if you don't do anything else and just focus on that, that right there. Just focus on that particular part right there. It, it, the case ought to be thrown out because he doesn't have an oath in office. He didn't put that in because Ashley said, or shall I say Danny Spugel said that every time she she defends someone, when she does her briefs and everything, she puts her oath of office every single time. And he's prosecuting a former president on a RICO charge that he's not even. And yeah, I'm going to say not qualified for, because if you have never prosecuted those types of felonies, those complex felonies, and you're prosecuting, even though you're doing the paperwork and doing the motions and everything. Unless if the whole thing was to prosecute it and let. And and then you know and then lose, and then you run with the money. But I don't think Fanny knew that Nathan, at this time, was dealing with another woman in Cobb County, that paid him five hundred dollars an hour, while he was with Fanny. He was dealing with both women, and then she lost her job, and then she worked for Fanny underneath her in a different department. You, that's some trifling stuff going on down there. Down, down yonder. It's a little bit trifling. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. So, now, okay, Willis lacks the authority to appoint him, notwithstanding. Wade also was not authorized under Georgia law to prosecute this matter because he and Willis failed to comply with the statutory authorization, I mean, authorizing his appointment and oath of office. At the next 
at the time Wade appeared before the SPGJ, he has not a do. He was not a duly authorized special prosecutor because he had no oath of office on file and was not under a valid employment contract with FCD. Oh, oh my goodness. She circumvented the law to get him in there. Oh man, Nathan, you were, you, you were slinging it. You had that woman di mentally discombobulated. She was not thinking, <laughs> Fanny, you're going down, woman down, woman down. <laughs> oh, my. That's on my other channel. I do woman down. Oh, Fanny, this is bad. Oh, my goodness. This is bad. Oh, my goodness. This is beyond bad. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Wade, however, signed numerous subpoenas on the special prosecutor purpose, special purpose prosecute. Wait, wait, wait. Let me go back over. Wade, however, signed numerous subpoenas for the special purpose grand jury as a special prosecutor under the power of the state to command appearance, oh my goodness, Wade obtained court orders to compel the attendance of this um, attendance out of state witnesses to compel witnesses who were asserting privileges or immunity for testifying. Wade negotiated legal immunity deals on behalf of the state for legal witnesses appearing before the special purpose grand jury. Oh, shite. Oh, shite. Oh, my goodness. This man, everything could, everything. Now, look, I got $7.50 worth of law. Looking at this motion, this is bad. Beyond bad. The man had no oath of, oath, oath of office. He didn't come through the door correctly. He 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 just didn't have no, he probably didn't have a badge to get in the front door. He probably went through the back door. Oh my goodness. This is beyond bad. Wow, Fanny. As Eddie Murphy said, if you get a woman going, Woo, you could do anything. That's exactly. Oh, Fanny. Oh, my goodness. Fanny, woman down, woman down. Oh, my goodness. The district attorney is responsible for advising the grand jury on any questions of law or proceedings which may have as a grand jury. Oh my goodness. Okay. This case, Wade was not a member of the district attorney staff. Oh my goodness. It was not and was not a duly a sworn, a duly authorized special assistant prosecutor, but was presented because Willis alone had authorized him to be present despite her not having the legal authority to permit a member of the public to be presented during the secret grand jury proceedings. Oh my goodness, this is bad. The, author, uh, the statutory authorized Willis relied upon in appointing Wade is, a, is clear that such is legal only if provided for by the local law authorized by the governing authority of the county OCAG. Damn. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Let me see. Did I do any more? Oh, man. 
Okay. Here, Willis violated the oath of office and should be disqualified. Willis has benefited substantially indirectly and continues to benefit from the litigation because Wade is being paid hundreds of thousands of dollars to prosecute the case on her behalf. In turn, Wade is taking Willis uh, is taking Willis on and paying vacations across the world with money he's being paid by the Fulton County taxpayers and authorized solely by Willis. Whoa. As noted, however, has uh, this has happened. Oh, wait a minute. Noted, as noted elsewhere, this has happened even though Willis has not sought or obtain Fulton County approval to hire and pay Wade, even if though she had never disclosed the personal nature of the relationship with Wade. Okay. Let me see. We're on page 26. Willis has numerous salary. Willis has numerous salaried prosecutors on in her office and uh, more could have been hired with her uh, additional COVID backlog funding who could have prosecuted the case. Instead, on the day before Wade filed for his divorce, she entered into an agreement to pay Wade far above any other prosecutor in the office was being paid but she hid the this agreement from Fulton County despite Wade being a single biggest expenditure in her office for professional service contractors in both 2022 and 2023. Man, she's going down. Oh, she's going down. Uh, let me see. Anything else? I think I stopped there. No, there's one more thing. Oh, I should have. I'm going to scroll down like that. Okay. All right. So she finally concludes all of that in 42 pages. For all of the four reasoning, Mr. Roman respectfully requests that this honorable court grants the assistant motion, the instant motion, dismiss the indictment against Mr. Roman and disqualify Willis, Wade, and other respective offices and firms from participating in this matter any further. Respectfully, Ashley Merchant or Shell, we know her as. Danny Spiegel bringing in the bringing in the the heat. She brought in the heat. She brought in the heat. What do you think? I just don't see. Okay, Fanny is okay. Fanny is fighting. In my opinion, Fanny is fighting a losing battle. He can do all these legal maneuvers and everything, but she can't get past the evidence. I have to say, Ashley is a heck of an investigator. Now, she said during the Senate hearing meeting that when she was practicing law or before, when, when she was working for the, um, the state, when she was... Um, um, uh, a public defender, he, her office could not afford an investigator. So she had to investigate her, the cases herself. And she learned and did a heck of a job. Fanny, Fanny is not getting out of this. She has 17 other lawyers that are bringing the heat. Now I gotta say, um, Stephen um, Sado, Sado, Donald Trump's lawyer, 
brought in the heat. He didn't he didn't make it that long, but he brought in the heat. Ashley hit every point. She's like, I'm going to, I'm poking holes in everything that she did. You can't, you can't hide from this because I, her husband, John, you better not upset her because you're going down. <laughs> oh my goodness. I just don't see. Bonnie, I, I see her being disqualified. I, I, I see her being disqualified. I could be wrong, but I highly doubt it based on this, based on the court hearings, based on what she said, because she said that she did have a relationship with him. And even though the things that she said that he never came to her house, he never spent the night over. Now, if you're doing the bad baby, bad baby, bad baby, or shall I say he's doing the tallywhacker swing and he never stayed overnight, nah. And even John, I'm sorry, Stephen, Stephen um, Sado said, I got the data. I got the data. I got, I got the cell phone data. I know where you were. I know where Nathan was, what time, what date, and how long he'd been there. Fanny, you're going down. Stop lying. Wade, you're going down. Stop lying. And if they make you pay that money back, okay, you bet. You better go to the nightclub and go do that tallywhacker swing. I don't know what to tell you, man. You, you overplayed your hand when you were doing that to Sonia, her paying you $500 an hour. And then she eventually lost her job for that. Now, Fanny, she's on her way going down. You're laying something down to make these women lose their mind, their sensibilities, and their sense of direction. you Ooh. Now, my only question is this. This simple question. Nathan has stalled the has stalled the finalizing the finalization of his divorce. Is he sharing this with his wife? This is a question. This is a question. In the midst of all this madness, is did his wife and him find a way to patch things up, forgive each other, stop to stop the uh, divorce proceedings? Because he got seven hundred thousand over there. He got, I know, a lot of money over there with being with Sonia over there in Cobb County. Put that together. They got over a million dollars. Over a million dollars from him doing a jungle swing. Oh! Old references. Gen X and baby boomers know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> If you're a millennial, you're like, uh, PWL, Laura, what are, what are you talking about? <laughs> Gen Z's like, I don't get it. Don't worry about it. You'll learn about it at some point. Okay, on that note, please like, subscribe, share. If you like what I do, please put something down and say, I like it. If you don't like it, Subscribe, dislike, and tell me why you don't like my content. And if you want to help me out, cash at me at Politics with Laura. Yes. PayPal, Venmo, all same thing. And that note, I want to thank you for stopping by.